Sound effects make movies movies, but there's a bit of sausage making going on here. Sometimes you're better off not knowing where those sounds originated. So start banging your coconut shells together as we gallop through the secrets behind some of the most bizarre sound effects in recent movie history. Star Wars sound designer Ben Burtt is viewed as a legend in movie production circles for his sound effect creation methods. And with four Oscars to his name on beloved productions such as E.T. and the Indiana Jones series, it's no surprise. The next time you or one of your friends swings an invisible lightsaber in an imaginary battle, just remember who came up with that unique swoosh sound. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. An elegant weapon, but a more civilized age. Working on the 1977 space fantasy classic, Burt found an old film projector and blended its sound with an old TV to create the distinctive lightsaber noise. Just sat there and idled, made a wonderful humming sound, and it would slowly change in pitch. However, even a maestro like Burt needed a touch of luck, and the whirling element of the lightsaber sound was discovered completely by accident. He managed to capture the iconic sound by thrusting a shotgun microphone back and forth in front of a speaker. The inventive sound designer for James Cameron's $102 million masterpiece, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, came up with some frugal and unusual methods to make the film sound as good as it looked. The special effects for the film were spectacularly groundbreaking and ate up a large portion of the then-recorded budget. This makes Gary Rydstrom's achievements with the sound effects budget all the more impressive. Amazingly, an everyday item played a key role in completing one of the film's coolest scenes. Robert Patrick's T-1000 is chasing John and Sarah Connor through a mental asylum, but a row of jail bars appear to block him. But he's liquid metal, so he just goes right through. Rydstrom revealed that he came up with a very cost-effective way to create the sound. He turned a dog food can upside down and slowly eased the congealed food out. The quality of Rydstrom's methods was matched only by his creativity, which yielded another unexpected and comical money saver for Terminator 2. By submerging a microphone wrapped in a condom into a thick flour water mix and then blowing dust off into it, he was able to create the perfect sound for the T-1000's shape-shifting abilities. Beneath the mines of Moria lives the terrifying fire demon known as the Balrog, which shows up just in time to ruin the day for Frodo and his friends in the Fellowship of the Ring. The sound of that blood-chilling roar was achieved by dragging a concrete block slowly across a wooden floor, while horses and donkeys were layered in to fill out the sound. It was the work of sound designer David Farmer, who also created the sound of Moria orcs after a visit to a marine mammal center. He told Empire, It was the time of year they had lots of baby elephant seals there, so we recorded ourselves scrambling around wearing cleats for the movement. But the major signature sound for them was the elephant seal pups. Dinosaurs have been extinct for thousands of years, so obviously no one really knows what they sounded like. No, not even the people who worked on Jurassic Park. Although the finished product sounds fitting in Jurassic Park, it does make you wonder how wrong filmmakers have gotten when it comes to movies featuring prehistoric creatures. In a 1995 documentary, director Steven Spielberg told sound designer Gary Rydstrom to, quote, go make dinosaur sounds that don't sound like Godzilla or Rodan. What's really fun to me sometimes is just having something on a keyboard and performing it almost like music and watching the picture and giving it a try and seeing how it worked. Rydstrom's approach was to find a creature that scientists estimate existed close to the time of dinosaurs, tortoises. The shelled creatures did provide the right sound bites, but how it came about was both strange and unforeseen. Rydstrom sat around for hours recording tortoises while they made it. Cover your ears, kids. Does anyone know what a giant rolling boulder sounds like as it bears down on you after a booby trap in an ancient temple has been triggered? No, but Raiders of the Lost Ark sound designer Ben Burtt managed to create a pretty convincing approximation by using an old Honda Civic on a gravel road. And we just coasted down this road 
And as the car accelerated, it gave a sense of gathering speed, and it, uh, that ended up being really the basis for the giant boulder. To record the sound, Bert had to hang out the back window of the car with his boom mic pointing down toward the tires. Does that make him the Indiana Jones of sound design? Eh, maybe. The web that shoots from his wrists have saved Spider-Man on many occasions, but how do you decide on a sound for such an unusual tool? Spider-Man director Sam Raimi had high standards when it came to what he wanted, and sound department veteran Charles Maines did his best to come up with something unique. Initially, there were failed experiments with blow darts and chemical rockets before the crack of a bullwhip got the whole process started. With that first layer down, the second came from a very unexpected place, a feral cat that Maines himself rescued from the pound who would attack him every time he tried to feed her. And she would spit. And that spitting sound actually was one of the principal components for the actual oh. shot. It's honestly amazing that putting an angry cat in the sound design worked out so well. That decision could have gone horribly wrong. Oh no, no! Ah!